Hello, uh, this week's screencast is about how to start a project in Bootstrap Kiwi. Kiwi is a sweet RSpec style framework for Objective-C which allows you to very concisely and clearly make statements about uh, the behavior of your objects and, and um, what the expected results are. So let's start with a utility application. I'm going to call it Kiwi P1. And we're going to make sure that include unit tests is checked. So once we have that, we can use command U to run unit tests. So we'll notice that we already have a failure. And it's because Xcode creates a failing unit test for us automatically. And we're, I'm not actually going to fix the test because uh, it's sample code and uh, we're not going to use this syntax. So I'm not going to bother looking it up. So that is enough for our first commit. We have to initialize our repository. Uh, we have to create a git ignore and ignore our build directory, workspaces, and XC user data. Then once we add everything, we should notice that we have everything that we want to track and nothing that we don't. So now we can bring in the Kiwi library. And I like to bring in third-party code, especially stuff in GitHub, as submodules. So we're going to add a submodule. And we're going to place it at submodules Kiwi. Git is nice enough to create the submodules directory for us. So now we will have a .git modules and the actual cloned directory in our repository. We can add that and commit it. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add the code into our project. So I'm going to do that by creating a submodules group. And then a Kiwi group. And we're going to use the info pane to associate the submodules group with the submodules directory and the Kiwi group with the Kiwi source directory. Now, this directory, this Kiwi slash Kiwi directory, is the directory that we need to bring into our project. So once we do that, we can add the files into our project. And these go into the testing target and not the main target. So we now need to set up some things to get this to compile. We need to set our compiler to the LLVM compiler. We're going to do that in both targets. This is a good thing to do. Anyway, this is what Apple recommends now. And uh, it's much stricter with the syntax and doesn't allow you to get away with things that you probably don't want to get away with anyway. In addition to that, we are going to treat warnings as errors. Now, this is a must if you're going to do BDD. So once you have those things set, we can run our tests again, even though it's just a send testing kit test, and it passes. Now that's enough for a commit for me. So the next thing we should do is we should create a test. Now we're gonna get rid of the one that, that Xcode gave us. And we are going to use a file template, which I've built. 
and we're going to create a food class. So these file templates are a little um, they a little wonky, uh, so you can't specify that different parts of the file go into different targets, which is why I added it to both. We'll remove these files. So once we've done that, okay, it builds and runs, but we have no tests. So this is what the Kiwi spec file looks like. So now we can add a piece of specification. We can say it should start with a bar of 42. Because so you can't have foos without bars. So once you have an instance of foo, then we can say that the value foo.bar should equal the value 42. Now, we have an error right off the bat. Uh, the property bar is not found, so we're going to create the bar property. Run again. For some reason, that error doesn't go away until we save that file again. Doesn't make sense. All right, so we save property bar requires method bar to be defined. So we will synthesize that. And now we have an error that we got the wrong value. So we can go into our class that we can create an initializer. And we can set the property with the accessor. And the build failed because the property is read only. We'll make it read right. And the build succeeds and the test pass. So we're using BDD. However, you'll notice that I had to do a lot of you know shifting over here and this between that and that and going over here and clicking through files, etc. So that's one of the reasons why next week I'd like to show you how to drive this with Vim. Thank you very much.